Madam President. Senator from Tennessee. Thank you, Madam President. Over the past year, the Biden administration has put out some truly absurd propaganda, but last week they released something that was so over the top, I had to double check to make sure that it was real. Yes, of course it has up here that it was issued February 7th, 2 p.m., and it's going to expire June 7th of this year at 2 p.m had all the markings of something that was legitimate, but it is so outrageous that I confirmed that it was actually a government-issued document. And of course, I'm referring to the Homeland Security memo that is summarizing the current threats, the terror threat to the United States states. Under normal circumstances, you would expect a threat assessment to be a helpful document. That's what we've come to expect. But in this case, it wasn't obvious before, but now it is so obvious. It is crystal clear that conventional definitions of the word normal no longer apply to this administration. If you have not read this, you will not believe your eyes. What makes it so uniquely infuriating is the case with which DHS used an official document to equate violent terrorists with Americans who refuse to fall in line with the Biden administration's narrative of the day. They did it so easily, just laying out their case of threat assessments to the United States. Alongside descriptions of actual violence and threats against churches and schools, DHS warns of, and I quote, the proliferation of false or misleading narratives which sow discord or undermine public trust in U.S. government institutions. The bulletin specifically identifies, and I quote, widespread online proliferation of false or misleading narratives regarding unsubstantiated widespread election fraud and COVID-19 as key factors contributing to the current heightened threat environment. Yes, you heard me correct. They identify widespread online proliferation of false and misleading narratives regarding unsubstantiated widespread election fraud and COVID-19. So let's decode this. They're not just talking about acts of violence committed to achieve a political or an ideological goal. They are talking about dissent. And what does DHS suggest someone do if they find themselves menaced in the court of public opinion? They want you to report the offender to law enforcement. That's right. Report Report the offender to law enforcement. Madam President, I've come to the floor time and again to detail just how frightened the American people are of Joe Biden's radical agenda. But this bulletin is the best evidence I've seen to date of just how frightened Joe Biden is of the American people. They must be scared to death over there in that White House. How dare anybody question them? How dare anybody call them into question for the agenda that they have? I'd even go so far as to suggest that this betrays his administration's desire to police the speech, thoughts, and opinions of American citizens 
and to deputize the public to help keep dissenters in line. The Biden administration is as close as they ever have been to declaring that expressing public disagreement with their agenda is akin to an act of domestic terrorism. Think about this. It isn't just an outrage. It is dangerous for a few different reasons, the most important of which is that it ignores the line differentiating violence and threats from constitutionally protected speech. The former have no place in public discourse. Let me be very clear about that. The former have no place in public discourse. The latter is essential to the functioning of our democracy. Indeed, this nation's democracy, Madam President, one of the reasons that we have stayed free and have stayed a democratic republic is because we share respect for robust, respectful political debate. But it appears with this administration, they've thrown that out the window to say it's our way or it's the highway. We don't want to hear any dissent. We don't want to hear a point, a counterpoint. We don't want to entertain an objection. We're busy. We're busy pushing our socialist agenda. We don't have time for free-thinking, independent individuals to raise their hand and ask a question. It's get-in-line time. We've got a short window. We've got to make this happen. I would suggest also, Madam President, that it cheapens the horrors of actual terrorism and dilutes the perceived danger of violent extremism. It's an insult to the memories of those who died in the September 11th attacks and the Oklahoma City bombing, and to those who were at gunpoint at a Colleyville, Texas synagogue. But lastly, and most despicably, it suggests that Americans will never be safe until we consent to live in a constant state of fear. According to this bulletin, security is impossible in the face of dissent. It betrays a nightmarish and completely un-American endgame. Today, I sent a letter to Secretary Mayorkas urging him to make it clear that this is just sloppy communication on their part. Madam President, I'd like to submit that letter for the record. Without objection. Thank you, Madam President. I'd also like to briefly quote for the record precisely what I asked him to do. I urge you to make very clear to the American public that the Department of Homeland Security does not consider those who disagree with this administration to be domestic terrorists. I further urge you to clarify that the department will not interfere with the rights of all Americans to speak publicly about their political views, including any views that might conflict with the policies and political talking points of this administration. I urge you to revise the bulletin to make clear to the American public that it is decidedly not the role of the Department of Homeland Security to enforce particular narratives or to quash the speech of those who disagree with this administration." End quote. Madam President, this is a very simple request. My hope is that Secretary Mayorkas recognizes his obligation to put everyone at ease by fulfilling it. 
I can guarantee there are people in my beloved Tennessee that are very upset as they have read this bulletin because they treasure their free speech. They treasure the ability to have robust political debate. They like talking with their friends and neighbors and having those discussions and seeing if they can pull them to their side of an issue, whether it's a local, a state, or a federal issue. They want to preserve that freedom. This memo says that freedom goes away, that it overrides the Constitution, it overrides the rule of law. If you do it, somebody can report you and it will be considered something not tolerated by this administration. The Biden administration put out this bulletin to highlight a particular danger, but the real danger lies in the document subtax. Even if Secretary Mayorkas makes good on his oath to defend the Constitution, and if he moves forward to revise the bulletin, I fear much damage has already been done. Through this document, the Biden administration has made it abundantly clear that they view dissent as a threat and that punishing dissent is the cost of maintaining public safety. I wish I could dismiss this as yet another political spat, but the White House is the world's biggest and most powerful bully pulpit. When the Biden administration talks, people listen and they take them seriously. If what I've laid out today is not the position of the Biden administration, it is their obligation to speak up and to correct the record. as elected representatives to put ourselves between the American people and any official who would dare tolerate such a dystopian power grab. So also, we should remind those officials that how they feel about our constitutional right to dissent is absolutely irrelevant. I yield the floor. I note the absence. Clerk will call the roll. 